So we're here in this code, and remember that this variable span was 20. So just before we're about to leave the current position, so that's the frame num is almost 20, we're going to check some things. We're going to restrict the snake movement, so let me just uh, slash slash this comment, pound, pound, pound. Uh, just remember where I am, and I'm going to press Control F. And I'm going to search for, uh, I'm going to double click here and I'm going to press Control F. I'm going to search for restrict snake movement. Press find next. And here I am. This function here basically checks for all four boundaries of the stage. So if you're moving right in the direction and uh, your head.x is greater than a certain amount, it basically means if you're uh, out of bounds on the right, then you die. If you move left and you're too too far to the left, um, then you die. Same with going down and up. Now what happens in dead? It basically does some cleanup. So somehow uh, the game is no longer running. We're going to remove events and listeners. Whenever you add event listeners, you eventually have to remove them. Otherwise, you might have some problems as you're switching between scenes. We have the game over dialog box and um, we need to show that it's true. Okay, let's press Control F, pound, 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 enter. This is where we left off. Oops, I had that extra one. Press Control F one more time. Okay, so this is where we were, and we have a function called penetration. Control F, actually let me press escape, double click this word penetration. Control F, enter, escape. So check if the snake penetrates himself. So we have a for loop here, and for every <clears throat> for the length of each part in the actual snake array, it's going to see if the head's x position is equals to that particular body part's x position. So if if the x's and the y positions match up, basically means that your head collided with one particular body part, then we die. And we know what happens when you die because we just talked about that. Press Control F, pound, 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 enter. So that's what we just did. We just checked the penetration code here. Now let's take a look at this. If head x equal equals foo dot x and head dot y equals equals foo dot y, somehow if your head's position matches the food's position, what happens? We attach a new part, and we also call the new food function, and the new food function. Uh, simply uh, checks for a random, an appropriate random position on the screen to position the food. Now we haven't looked at attach new part, but let's just read on for now. So this is a function that we need to investigate and, and understand. So we have another if statement here, if running. So if running is the same thing as saying if running equal equals true. So if the game is running, what's going to happen is we're going to follow the next part. I think this is the coolest part of the code. So the fact that we use an array, it's awesome that we can do this. We have a for loop that's basically looping uh, starting from the um, end of the array, so basically the, the last part of the array all the way to the beginning, and it's saying that the last uh, array element, so y position, is equals to the same uh, snakes uh, position before it. So if this was an array, this is index 0, 0 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The last part is going to take on the y position of the part before it. Remember this value, so the uh, array element to the left of it is going to be assigned into uh, this guy here. So somehow here's your snake array. This is following this leader, this is following this leader, this is following this leader. So it's taking on the previous positions all the way to the head. So if this is an array, the leftmost index is 0 is the head. So we're following the leader. I think this is a really cool, beautiful code to meditate upon. And if it's fuzzy for you, just please look up uh, the array tutorial on ActionScript code. Uh, uh, um, figure out how arrays work in, in their indexing. And then at the end of the uh, function here, we increase the frame number because uh, this this 
whole fun entire function move head is being called every frame. All right. So the last function we need to study investigate is attach new part. All right. So let's take a look at the, look at this attach new part code. So new part sprite equals new body part. Remember that if I go to the program here, press Control L library, you can right click the body part movie clip properties. You can see that it's exported for action script, so we essentially created our own class based on the movie clip. So when I go back here, you can see that we have new part is uh, based off that actual body part. It's a sprite. You could have made it a movie clip, but sprite's a little bit uh, less bloated. So we add child new part, so it actually draws it. And uh, we're uh, pushing the uh, um, we're pushing the uh, new part onto the parts array, and in terms of taking care of x, y positions, uh, it's all calculated um, based on the location of where that um, part is. It just copies; it follows the head based on the previous code we discussed. That's pretty amazing. The score is increasing by five, and the the score the text field is actually um, being updated and we have to cast it with string because when you're talking about the text property it's expecting a, a string as opposed to a number so we must cast it for it to work properly all right so most of the code we already talked about we when we call the function restart game it just initializes everything back to uh, the way it was uh, it's a good idea to clean up code whenever you add a child you should correspondingly remove the child and we use a loop just because it's more efficient for arrays to do so and when you say parts array equals square bracket square bracket you're clearing it out and we're starting the uh, game again so we're listening to see if the person presses the key and we're calling the function initialize so we look at the last two lines of code here we have a game over dialog box that was a movie clip and within the movie clip we had a button called restart take a look at that instance name restart and that uh, the end you die restart button is going to listen for you to actually click on it and in the case that you click on it, it's going to restart and uh, finally uh, the entire game actually listens and works because uh, the stage is listening for you to actually press the keyboard in the case where you change directions so let's finish off this tutorial by looking at that uh, game over dialog box one more time it's listening for the restart game function so if I close this just uh, take a look at this one more time there's the movie clip name double click into it you see there's a button here called the restart we named the instance name restart and so we made this dot add event listener. We made this button actually listen for you to press the button. So there you go. We've talked about the snake game. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this tutorial. You are uh, increasing in your skills and you should be very proud for leveling up. Keep eating those green mushrooms.